So guys, we are back. Today I wanted to do something completely different to what we usually do. Um, now, if you follow a lot of the stuff we do, we do a lot of colour grading tutorials. I wanted to try something on Photoshop today. A few people have, um, I mean, if you follow my Instagram, uh, it's Sebastian underscore JWB. Some of my photos you'll see have been Photoshop. So for example, this one here, this one, sorry, this one here. Um, and some people are asking me how I managed to change the sky and do that. So I wanted to do, dedicate a video to it. Um, so here's an example of something I've done recently, just a really quick edit just to demonstrate what it looks like. So this is the color graded version. If I turn that layer off, <coughs> this is the actual file within Photoshop itself. And you can see what I've done is I've actually made the sky from two separate layers. But basically what I'm doing is replacing the sky from the original image uh, and we are putting our own sky in. Okay, so today we're going to be working on image. Uh, this is the image we're going to be starting off with. We're hopefully going to be replacing the sky and we're going to be putting Milky Way or Night Sky in. Um, I'm going to take you right from the start to the end. I'm going to show you how you do each individual step. It may take a while, this may be a long video. Obviously you guys can skip ahead if you feel like you already know how to do it. The first thing you want to do is you want to get your image, whether you took it yourself or you can go onto this handy website called uh, Unst. So I got this one from someone on Unsplash and he's called Julian Lavelli. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Okay, so what we're going to do is search for a night sky image. Uh, the idea is we're going to try and find something that is in landscape that we can then use to put behind here. Now obviously if you've got images that you've taken, then it's probably best to use those just because it's a bit more authentic. One thing I will say, if you use any photos from other people, uh, just make sure you credit them uh, if you do upload the photos. Uh, it's just a nice thing to do. I know on this website you can technically do what you want uh, with the images, but it's, it does it is nice to credit the people who took the images. I will suggest don't go anything too crazy like this for example, because if you can imagine putting that behind this you're going to tell the image is fake. And the idea is here to make sure the image looks as realistic as we possibly can. So you've downloaded all your images, you want to just data, drop them into Photoshop and you want to just keep on pressing enter until all of the files are inputted into your uh, Photoshop file. Then one thing I will do is I'm literally going to click on the first one, shift click to the bottom one, command G or control G, uh, depending if you've got a Mac or P uh, Windows. Um, and then I'm going to just create the folder, I'm going to call it Sky. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that layer off and we'll deal with that one in a minute. We'll put it underneath the uh, foreground layer. Come down on this side of your toolbar um, and you're going to want to find the quick selection tool. So click on the magic wand tool, if it's not showing press option and then click again and you get your quick selection tool. And the idea is you can drag along the image where you want to select and it will select that part of the image for you. It's done a pretty decent job, obviously down here you can see it's not exactly done it perfectly. So what you can do is zoom in, if you press the uh, close, uh, the open square bracket you can make your brush smaller or the closed square bracket you can make it larger. Uh, you want to zoom in, press option again and then you want to just paint i.e. you're removing the selection in that area there. So you want to just make sure that it's all correct to where you want it to be. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is press Shift Command I or Shift Control I and that's going to invert your selection. So once you've made your selection and you've inverted your mask, you want to come up to here uh, click on select and mask, uh, put the transparency up to about 63%. All this is going to do is give us an idea of how much it's removing and we can alter a few details. So we're going to come down to contrast, we're going to bring it up fairly high because we want to make sure this edge here is quite sharp. You don't want it to be soft or blurred because obviously it's a rock. So at the moment that's looking pretty good so I'm going to press OK and then we're going to come down here and, slick, uh, and click on the mask tool. And that's going to then get rid of our sky. So you can see now, if I turn on anything behind it, it's got rid of the sky and we can put our new sky in. Okay, so I'm going to drag the sky layer on top. I'm going to come in and I'm going to just choose one of the skies that I think is going to work best. So I'm going to use this sky here um, and I'm just going to literally press Command T shift option so then I can drag it out to be the correct size. One thing you might want to do is readjust where your image starts and your image finishes. I'm going to add a bit more sky, come down to my sky layer and then I'm going to just come down to my sky layer and then drag it to where I want it to be positioned. So already we've got a new sky but the problem we've got now is the sky doesn't blend very well with the uh, landscape and also the colors are completely wrong. So for example if you see on my image I did here I made a fade effect. What you can, what you can do to do this 
uh, is come down to create a new layer uh, in between the sky and also the land. Uh, come onto the gradient tool, make sure you've selected the one where it goes to transparent. You want to come down, select um, a whitey, a whitey blue, mostly white, um, and then you want to click OK and literally just press Shift and then drag up, and it's going to make sure you're on this straight one. If you want to click on one point and shift click and drag straight upwards and that's going to make a horizontal gradient and you can see we then have a gradient between the darker and then lighter part of the sky now at night time you have uh, a lighter horizon so we're going to mess around with this and it's all up to personal preference again it's one of those things how bright do I want it to be on the horizon how much do I want it to fit in is if you have a mountain for example here don't forget to increase the amount of light gradient on this side as well because obviously there are probably things on the mountain behind and you want the gradient to follow roughly the landscape. That's a bit too harsh so I'm going to bring it back um, and probably do something like that. Now if you think you've done it, overdone it too much you can always come to opacity and you can bring it down. I think it's probably about right so I'm going to leave it where it is. Then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to change the colour up ever so slightly just by double clicking on this and I'm just going to add a bit more blue to the image. I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to do a lower one here. So we're going to leave it at that for the moment, just for the time being. You can see the sky is now blending a little bit more. Now the next thing I usually like to do is colour grade the entire thing so it's all roughly in the same colour grade. Um, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to click on our top layer and you're going to come down to this circle with a line through it and you're going to select hue and saturation to start off with. Then uh, option click on it so this basically ties this layer to this layer. So anything we do to this adjustment layer will only affect the layer below it. Um, and we're just going to drop the saturation of the lower layer down to about minus 50%, maybe even a bit more, just to make it fit a little bit more. Uh, we're then going to drop the brightness because obviously at night time it's not going to be that bright. And then we're going to close that there. So you can see you can see the difference it's made already just by introducing that adjustment layer. It fits a lot more better like this. Uh, and then obviously once you've done all this you can go and color grade it to however you like, but we're just making this fit in one image at the moment. Okay, so the next thing you can do, you can also add more adjustment layers. So for example, you can add another uh, hue saturation layer. Uh, we link that well by pressing option click and then we can change the color. So we can add some purple um, or blue. I'm gonna try and make, make the, back, uh, the foreground a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna bring it up to about 174. Um, and if you think it's too much, the reason I've done this on a separate layer and I haven't come into this layer and done the hue on here, is because if I want to individually control the hue, I can come up to here and I can go onto opacity and I can bring it down to about 26%. So I am adding some blue to the foreground, but not dramatically. It's not a massive change, but it still keeps the orange look of the sand. Okay, so that's pretty much we're basically already already done. Uh, the next few things you can do is add some mist in front of this, and I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, alternatively, you can add different things into the sky, and I'll also show you how to do that if you wanted to. Okay, so once you've done all of this, uh, you want to come along, go onto your web browser. Okay, so now you search for fog PNG. You want to come down uh, and probably just select one of these with a black background. I would suggest going for something softer like this image or this image here. Select that image and just drop it into your Photoshop file. Now, mine has done this weird thing here. That's because it's made itself um, attached to the layer below. So it's going to click Alt click on that layer just to deselect it. Um, if something happens like this, what that might do is deselect every single layer above it. So we're going to have to come back and reselect those. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just press Command T option uh, shift and we're just going to literally drag it out until it covers the width of the image. All we do now is come over to the normal panel, we're going to click on lighten and this is going to get rid of black um, and all we can do here is adjust the image to what we want. Uh, so I'm going to try and put some fog misty stuff like this. Obviously this just looks wrong so we're going to put that opacity on about 50% something like that. Um, enough where you can see it but not, not where it's overkill. We're just going to layer, call it the layer fog, come down, select the mask button, press B to select your brush, um, control click and then make sure your hardness is on 0%. Um, you're then going to want to make sure you've got uh, black selected down here. Um, if you're on black and white, if you want to quickly switch between the two, press X on your keyboard. Okay, so I'm just going to paint uh, now, basically just to remove that hard, solid line we've got at the bottom here. Um, and um, the aim here is mostly just to put some fog 
over the top of the mountains to blend the mountains in a little bit more and then for example if you get rid of too much press X to make it white and you can paint that layer back in another thing I sometimes like to do depending on the image style is make it look like there is a radial light going on in the background uh, so I'll show you how to do that all you do is come to the layer uh, in between the sky and in between the foreground create a brush tool by pressing B uh, making that brush about this big then coming down to here uh, selecting the color you want to choose about that sort of blue fairly dark blue press OK uh, click just a couple of times then you want to come down here again and you want to just gradually uh, increase the brightness of the color okay once we've done that uh, then we can press command T just to make this transform tool come up press option and then just drag down like this to make the image look like that and then we're just going to drag it across like this uh, we're going to position it so basically the bright light is halfway on the horizon uh, what, what I like to do is come down to linear dodge add that gets rid of some of the color but it, it looks and fits into the image a lot better and then we're going to come we'll reduce the opacity to about 70 percent um, and then I like to come up to filter blur Gaussian blur you spread out that light to make it look like it's more realistic so you can see if I turn it off or if I turn it on it draws your eye into the center of the image okay so we're done with that that is how you replace a sky in an image for a photo and obviously you can do it with uh, a sunset sky you can put a moody sky in clouds uh, the main important thing you do is making sure that the color grade between the two is very similar because as I demonstrated before if I turn that off and that off it really doesn't work it clashes massively because obviously this was taken during the day and we're trying to make it into a night photo so to do that you want to reduce the saturation and make the image a bit colder okay so the next thing we're going to do is just try and I'm going to show you how we can put in uh, other images to make our image look more interesting so I've downloaded this image of the moon um, and you want to do this with a black background like I've got that way we can remove the background really easily by coming up to uh, here and clicking on lighten or screen probably you want to click on screen and then you want to just press command T option and then drag and just increase the size of the moon to whatever size you want and um, it's not completely done yet because again the moon looks like it's just been placed on so one thing you can do is uh, create a new layer below the moon you want to press your brush tool increase the size of your brush to about the size of the moon maybe a little bit more select the white add a little bit of a blue tint if you want make sure that your hardness is on zero so I did that by pressing control click um, and then you literally just want to come in and you want to paint in behind the moon okay so you want to put that layer behind the moon but you also want to put it in front of the back sky okay so once you've done this you want to make sure the layer is in between the moon and the sky and we're literally just going to give the moon a sort of radial uh, light coming out of it and however you will notice the more we do that the less of the moon we are going to see because we're technically painting underneath the moon with white uh, one thing I like to do actually is pressing the mask tool and then doing it like that that way if I decide later on I've got rid of too much I can always come back and put more in and it's really simple um, so I'm literally just on the black black brush tool and I'm painting in some more of the moon so that is how you go about changing the sky in your photo. Uh, one thing I will say once you've done this, it's quite nice to then select all your layers, press Command G or Control G to uh, create a group. Uh, you can duplicate that group then and you can just create, click on Control click um, and then do Convert to Smart Object. And what it's going to then do is compile all those images together and make it into one. So we can now color grade this image separate to the original file. So anything we do on this image now will not affect the original file so we can always go back and change each individual aspect so to color grade in Photoshop it's a bit different to Lightroom okay so to color grade it the first thing I usually do is I do shift command A to bring up the camera raw selection uh, so now we have a very similar color grading layout to what we have in Lightroom um, so I'm going to head over to this uh, camera button here and I'm going to make mine a teal and orange color grade so I'm going to do that by sliding up the red primary and sliding down the blue primary and then I'm going to just go in adjust each of the colors to about 91% on the red primary uh, minus 70% on the blue primary and then obviously you can adjust the saturation of each as well um, so I'm going to leave it at that for the moment I'm going to head back to the I guess, camera shut or whatever button this is which is just the basic panel and you can go in and you can mess around with each individual thing so bring up the highlights going to drop down the shadows uh, just because it's night time bring up the whites 
drop down the blacks, probably whack up the clarity a bit because it's quite nice to bring out some of the stars. And then you can do things like adjust the temperature, make it a colder image, introduce more greens, introduce more purples. Click on the, what you want to do is make sure you're on the point curve. I just prefer this curve to the other one. Um, and then we're gonna just create a standard S curve by clicking in the middle here, just to anchor this point in the middle. We're then gonna click here, increase the contrast in the uh, highlights decrease contrast in the increase so basically this is just going to create a contrast curve and then I'm going to add a little bit of fade into the shadows by bringing it up here at the bottom and sliding it up I really just kind of like this style this is a really quick color grade I don't usually color grade in Photoshop so there's not an awful lot uh, really to do but you can see the difference it makes by doing a color grade afterwards uh, from before and after so that guys is how you replace your sky in your final image. Uh, if there's any more tutorials you guys want on Photoshop or Lightroom or video shooting, anything like that, don't forget to let us know. Uh, just leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, don't forget to go and check out my Instagram, that is at Sebastian underscore JWB. Yeah, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful to some of you. I'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.